And uh, so, very good. Um, there will also be a live uh, transcription that it, it has also has been activated. And, uh, and if you want to activate yours on your own device, then you just have to push the transcribe button that's found at the bottom there where it says live uh, transcribe or li live uh, transcript. And uh, everyone's audio and video, unfortunately, has been turned off except for the speakers, which is always a good thing. Uh, if you have questions, which I'm sure you'll have lots of them, there's a Q&A button that's down at the bottom there. Please uh, tap that button and uh, I'll look at I'll look after the Q&As and, and make sure that your question gets answered and um, and get get your question get asked as well. Right. Uh, in addition, uh, chats. Uh, again, I've been monitoring a little bit of the chats, but I won't be doing it during this uh, presentation here. I'll, I'll look at really at the Q&As and so forth. So again, um, lots of stuff. All the questions that will that you guys are, are, are going to ask are going to be um, addressed at the end of the presentation. So what I would like to do is I'd like to read, uh, introduce our speaker. Uh, Robin Braley is a brand specialist. He's a writer and a speaker. He is a member of the Calgary West and uh, of a Rotary Club and serves as the PR chair for the District 5360 under the PDG Monte uh, um, Ardera. I should I should have practiced that word. Uh, Monty was there before me, so I, I'll work on that uh, last name there. But thank you, Monty, for your service. Robin has uh, led many marketing initiatives at the Calgary West Club. In 2007, the club was awarded the Rotary International PR Award uh, for that year's record-setting strawberry shortcake fundraising campaign. Sounds delicious. Robin uh, has uh, spoke at several district conferences, events, and training sessions from 2014 to 2018. He wrote monthly posts uh, for building the Rotary brand, which were published in District 5360's newsletter. So a lot of great work. Robin is married to Meg, has two amazing daughters and one equally amazing son-in-law. Above all, he is, he is a proud grandpa of two boys. So again, thank you so much, uh, Robin, for attending tonight and uh, sharing your wisdom, which we're all excited to hear. So I'll leave it to you. Take it away, Robin. Well, thank you very much, John. And it's exciting to be here. And I'm looking forward to sharing my content tonight, social media in plain language. And my goal is to provide at least three takeaways that will help you to improve your social media experience. John and I never met. Last night, we uh, scheduled a tech check. We spent about 15 minutes doing that. And then we spent another half hour uh, talking about rotary things and our own professional experiences. And we've already become friends. So thank you very much, John, for hosting this tonight. It's great to have so many people from so many different uh, parts of the rotary world in Alberta, as well as beyond. And uh, 
uh, Northern Alberta, uh, 5370, and I believe the Yellowknife is also uh, part of, of your district, and of course, all over uh, Southern Alberta. And so welcome. I'm glad that you're here. Uh, it's so great to see you. I'm glad to be able to uh, talking to you. Now, if you weren't here, it would be a bit of a problem because I'd be talking to myself, which my wife says I've been doing a little bit too much lately. But Edmonton and Calgary, Northern Alberta and Southern Alberta, we now have something in common. The Calgary Flames, the Edmonton Oilers, two legitimate Stanley Cup contenders and what happens? They're only scheduled to play three games this year, and one game has already been played. So we're going to have to do something about that. Jody Swanson, who is the learning chair for uh, 5370, is on the call tonight. So welcome, Jody. And Jody had uh, sent the information to uh, various clubs, and uh, we want to welcome all of you as well. Bill Evans is here from Shelterbox, and uh, I interact with Shelterbox a lot on social media, and I thought, you know, this is maybe a way that we could uh, provide an additional service to Shelterbox by opening this up, and uh, there might be some, some takeaways that might uh, help them in what they do uh, online on social media. Now, Okay, I got a problem. Here we go. Uh, about two years before COVID, we have BC and AC now, but before COVID, I was uh, I had the opportunity to speak at District 5370's uh, leadership conference. It was a lot of fun. Uh, had a great time, great people, about 70, 80 people in their leadership training conference. And I spoke on developing sustainable rotary programs. And uh, that was a lot of fun. The first thing they said when I was called and asked to do it was, we'll provide free food. So they had me right away. There's something about Rotarians and food that just go together. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if there are some Rotarians on this call who have been saying for the last 20 years that social media is a passing fad. Well, I want to encourage you to take an Advil or Tylenol or an aspirin mm -hmm. and go lay down for maybe 20 minutes until that feeling is passed because social media is part of everyday life. Even if you don't think that you're involved that much in social media, all of the streaming and all of the uh, online things that happen, you think something and immediately there's an ad uh, in your feed uh, telling you to go and buy it. Uh, so social media is such a big part of what we do. And that's why it's important that Rotary Clubs uh, make uh, a started initiative to be involved, or maybe you are. Uh, and tonight, we'll provide some information that hopefully will help you to increase uh, uh, your engagement. But we always like to start with a quote, Rotarians never ask permission to dream great dreams. They just dream them and then take the necessary steps to make them real. Or if you'd prefer a simpler quote, in dog speak, Rotarians strive to become the person their dog thinks they are. Now, growing your social communities takes dedication, focus, patience, and above all, it does take time. When I'm going to share with you tonight are ways to simplify the process, reduce the time needed to do it, increase in efficiency, and of course, all of that goes together to boost engagement. But there is a tsunami of information that is coming at you every day, all the time. Social media success is what you say it is. What other people say doesn't really matter. Social media success is what you say it is. So start by taking the first step. Do it according to the KISS simple, relax, and just do one thing and do it well. So 
what's up tonight? Well, we're going to go through uh, sourcing content, writing, formatting, automation, archiving, photos, and I'm going to share a little bit about making graphics. We'll end with Facebook basics, building an engaging profile, uh, Facebook ads, Facebook Live, and Instagram. Of course, we'll have questions at the end. We're going to uh, uh, really make an effort to be finished uh, with about uh, 10 minutes to share to the end of the hour. And if we go a little bit beyond that, we still want to keep it open for questions. We live in the age of media convergence. If you are on TV or on the radio, or you've been interviewed by a newspaper or magazine, some of you may remember what newspapers are, immediately that content is put online within the hour. So it becomes part of the social media echo culture. On the other side, traditional media is always scanning social media for posts by people like Donald Trump and others, and that's where they also pick up news. So it's all together, it's all, it's all become one media. Now, we're not supposed to talk about uh, religion or politics or philosophies, but there's one overall truth that I think we can agree on, and that is that Google knows and Google doesn't care. Google eventually reveals all as politicians, entertainment, and sports celebrities eventually find out. But then you have to ask the question, if it doesn't show up on Google, does it even exist? A couple of years ago, I had the opportunity to work on a social media project with uh, past district governor Mary Turner. And so I Googled her name and I did a screenshot of what came up. Now, I want you to look at this carefully. There's, it's all Mary Turner and you can see her videos come up. Uh, there's lots of pictures that have been taken at different rotary events that come up, but there are a lot of club posts that come up. So people have uh, put, uh, uh, put, um, Mary's visits to their club, they've, they've uh, uploaded information onto their websites. And so there's a lot of presence there before you even start talking about social media. And that's a very good thing. So marketing 101 in plain language, what are your goals? To increase club awareness, to build online communities, to promote club activities, to position the club within your community, to attract new members or to raise funds. Your club might have all or at least some of these goals. And the ultimate goal to communicate with existing members, prospective members, people you serve, suppliers, project partners, community leaders, government, media, and people within your circles of influence. So what do I mean by that? If we were in a live session and we had a half day, I would ask you to break into groups at this point and I would give you worksheets with each title at the top. So existing members, that's easy. Prospective members, how many people visit your club every year? How many people have your members invited to attend Rotary? They haven't done that. They're kind of interested. How many of those people are there? Of course, uh, suppliers, you are in hotels, in restaurants for your meetings. There's other things that you uh, buy to help uh, your club uh, uh, function. There are project partners. If you do an event, you might have uh, uh, co-sponsors that are involved, as well as food suppliers and uh, tent suppliers. Could be all kinds of different uh, project partners. Of course, community leaders, government, your mayor and your city council should be, uh, you should be following those people. And the protocol for social media is if you follow someone else, the protocol is that they follow you back. So if that happens with uh, local government leaders, uh, then all of a sudden they're getting information about your club. 
of course, media and people within your circles of influence. So who are your people? A persona describes who your target groups are and what they are all about. We used to call that a customer profile. Social media calls it a persona. Now, identify your audience. Who do you serve? What are their interests? How old are they? What do they do? Where do they live? What time is it there? Now, that may seem to be an odd uh, point to list. At Calgary West, we have a lady that's been attending our meetings uh, on Zoom for the last year and a half, and she lives in Sri Lanka. You also have projects. Your club is involved in projects in different parts of the world. So uh, to post information that would show up in their feeds, it's a really good idea to, to have that information about uh, what time it is in their areas. Building community happens through building relationships. The relationship funnel, you get to know someone, and as you get to know them, you begin to like them. As you find more to like, you develop trust. As trust deepens, you feel they'll keep their promises, which leads to engagement. Deeper engagement leads to closing the loop by taking some form of action. That action might be to make a donation, to attend a meeting, to join your club, or to attend a community event that Rotary is involved in. High trust relationships are relevant. Both parties share common values and interests. Authenticity being the real deal. Transparency, letting the inner you shine through. And of course, consistency, posting quality content time after time. And of course, it begins with the brand. So storytelling for Rotary is the key to social media growth. How many stories do we have? If I were to ask each of you that are on this call, and there are now 50 people, if I were to ask each of you to identify uh, projects that your club has been involved in in developing nations or across your town or city, and uh, you've just had a group that has returned from uh, one of those projects, they will have stories that are worth sharing, stories that will touch people, stories that will engage people, stories that are of interest to the community. So social media is a tool for telling stories about your brand. So what is a brand? Your brand is what others think it is. Nothing else matters. Absolutely nothing. It doesn't matter what you think. It's what other people think. And you can always go to Jeff Bezos, who says, your brand is what other people say about you when you're not in the room. A successful brand connects at an emotional level. It evokes some kind of a feeling. And that brings us to cheese. If we could see all of you, I would ask you to raise your hands in response to this question. How many of you have woken up at three o'clock in the morning asking yourself, why do I buy that particular brand of cheese? Well, it could be a number of reasons. It could be where the grocery store places it in the cooler. It could be product packaging. That might be fancy packaging, or it might be no-name packaging. Product pricing, that's a big deal right now. Product quality. And the bottom line is that cheese gives you a consistent customer experience that you can depend on. You like the cheese. You use it in a lot of different dishes. You use it in a lot of different ways. And so you buy it the next time. Let me ask about ask you this question about your Rotary Club. What's your cheese? How do you build a brand? Brands are built by doing the same thing in the same way repeatedly. Consistency, predictability, and continuity will take you through the relationship funnel. I'm only going to mention search engine optimization once, and this is it. Search engine optimization is the root of everything you do online. It's something, if you don't know a lot about it, you want to learn. Now, the simplest explanation and where to start without uh, uh, you know, getting overwhelmed with information is just ask yourself, what would you Google? What 
words or phrase would you Google to find something? Think about that in the, ter in the terms of the post that you post for your club and think, what would people Google if they were looking for information about this event or this fundraising operation or fundraising event or attending our meetings? What would they Google and include th that phrase or those words in your post? Neil Battelle is a social media guru, I call him. One of my gurus that I can trust, that I, uh, their content is always useful, always helpful, I can always trust. And of course, as you know, if you Google almost anything, there are a gazillion experts out there and many of them don't have information. They don't really know what they're talking about. So uh, Google Neil Patel, cut and paste this when you get your PDF, Seven Free SEO Tools by Neil Patel. Take a look at that. So in playing language, why content? Well, years ago, Facebook started. Then along came LinkedIn. Twitter was in there. Then Pinterest. Instagram came along. And 2016, TikTok was launched. Now, TikTok is the last significant social media channel that's been started. Now, some platforms have come and gone. Uh, some platforms, you don't notice that they've gone until you see the word somewhere. And, oh, hey, I remember that. I used to engage with that. But over the last three years, something happened. Because of COVID, there was a greater emphasis on quality content. 10, 12 years ago, you could tweet something like, I'm a really funny guy and attach a picture of a weird cat. Well, people would engage with that. They'd retweet it. They'd follow you. You might get a uh, hundred followers based on that tweet. Those days are gone. Now people look for quality content that has value. What is your contact going to do for them in making them think, act, or just make them have a better day? So content is king. Content must be relevant and appeal to your target audience. Choose topics that connect the dots between you and your people. Let your values and vision guide your content. So content is everything you see, read, hear, or experience in any way. Content tells stories in whole or in part. So let's break it down. So what you see, design, photos, video, graphics, symbols, emojis. Now, can you get too many emails or Facebook posts with sad emojis across the bottom? Can you get too many of those? Or on the other side, can you get too many posts with happy emojis? Can anyone actually be that happy? So Content has to be thoughtful, it has to be well thought out, and it has to mean something. Photos and videos have become the engine that drives social media, and I'm going to talk more about photos later on. So what you read, text, titles, bios, punctuation, spacing, grammar. People read social media or anything online in a different way than they read a newspaper or a, or a, a magazine. So those uh, media have columns usually, and you'll have a full page article in a newspaper and there won't be any breaks. Maybe there'll be a couple of pictures in the middle or they'll do a couple of pullouts, but basically it's one great, big, long, unbroken story. Social media, has something that traditional media, traditional print media doesn't have, and that is lots of space. So newspapers, magazines, they don't use any space like that. They don't break things up because it takes more space and it costs more to produce it. So in social media, punctuation is important. Now, you use punctuation in different ways. You use a lot more exclamation points. You ask a lot more questions. Uh, there is some different usage than in uh, regular print writing and print uh, publishing. 
Spacing is important. White space is important. And of course, grammar. So people will judge you and assess you based on the quality of your content. Can you skim through it really easily? Do you have subtitles? Do you have titles? Have you broken it up? Do you have white space making it really easy to engage? And do you have proper grammar? And I'll talk about a, serve, uh, a uh, program that will help you with that if you need help with that. I use it. I use it every day. And uh, some of you may already, but if you haven't, that'll be a solution to your writing problems. So what you hear, podcasts, audiobooks, messages, and what tools you use, search engine optimization tools, links. Links are very, very important because search engine algorithms, they I like to call them the little spidey senses that uh, track down um, all of the content and they track down all of, they track through all of the links. So if you're linked to a high traffic website, well, those little spidey fingers are going to reach out to your post, however you or wherever you've linked it from. So that adds to your online uh, equity. Content categories, generic, topical, inspirational, entertainment, informational, educational, and promotional. Again, if we were in the same room in a full day seminar, we'd break out again and I would ask you to break each of those topics out and to write down in one word, in one word or a, a short phrase, stories that you have that you're exposed to in your community or in your club that fall into those categories. Once you start doing that, you'll find that you have a lot more content and a lot more uh, information that you can post than you may think you have. And I'm going to show you how to organize that in a couple of slides. So you can create original content. You can source from others. If you read the Rotarian and you find a story that uh, is really interesting and you think other people would, would find it interesting and meaningful, Google it online. It will come up. Copy the first paragraph or part of the first paragraph, paste it into your feed, add a personalized message, copy the URL, shorten it, add it, and it will probably bring up a picture from the story. If it's on Facebook or LinkedIn automatically does that, Twitter sometimes does that. Share others' content, so retweet or just share something on Facebook. Annotate explain or expand on others content. Now, this is one that a lot of people don't use as much as they should, because it really helps to position you as a source of uh, uh, quality content, but also a person who is thoughtful. And of course, repurpose existing content, content that maybe uh, you posted uh, some time ago, or maybe that you've uh, written for in a document or uh, for a report uh, that could make uh, really great social media content with a little bit of editing and a little bit of shaping. So let me show you how that works. So most of you know John Hugo, who's a senior executive with Rotary in Evanston. He wrote this tweet, wrote, Rotary clubs in Northern Illinois distributed hundreds of iPads to nursing homes, hospitals, and hospice centers so that residents and patients could see and talk with friends and relatives during the COVID-19 pandemic. So I retweeted that and added the message, Rotarians are all about building relationships, giving iPads to help COVID isolated seniors maintain connectivity a connection with friends and family makes perfect sense. It's service above self. So when that went into John's feed, he retweeted it to his community and a whole uh, synergy started to happen. A wonderful thing is evergreen content. You're going to love evergreen content because evergreen content is relevant and fresh forever. It's not dated. It is not time sensitive like news, births, deaths, political or sporting events. 
It can be republished many times. Now ask yourself, if you publish a quote today, do you think that the people in your community are going to remember that you published it when you post it in a month or three or four months? They're not, it's not going to happen. So evergreen content uh, is, is content that can be used over and over and over again. And it helps to fill the gaps when you don't have any fresh, anything fresh, when you are uh, short of time uh, and you should post evergreen content helps you with that. It's searchable and will add to your online presence. So Neil Patel, Google Neil Patel, 101 ways to source content ideas. Once you start, you will find that you've got a wealth of content sources at your fingertips. So content curation is the process of organizing your stories in a methodical and organized way that makes them easy to find. It makes sense to you. So what do I mean? Well, I write a lot of quotes, and this is a screenshot of my quotes in that file. I have uh, in with quotes in a particular subject area where I have a lot of uh, a lot of them. I put them into a file. So in that file, my inspiration and motivational file, you can see I've got five or six different. Um, documents that have a little different take on on motivational and inspirational quotes. Now, I bring one up. Let's pick one. Positive change requires the will to do the hard things that make one better. Becoming better takes discipline, determination, and focus. All I have to do is copy that, paste it into my social media feed, attach a picture, Remember, pictures and videos are the search engines of social media and post it. So what events do you have at your club that refer that recur on a monthly or yearly basis? When you think about it, I'm sure you have lots of them. Of course, fundraising events, uh, anniversary kinds of activities, activities in the community, that you participate in or are just good things that should be promoted and should be drawn attention to. When you think about it, you have a lot of events that recur on a regular basis. Write content about that event when it's coming out, when it's coming up, and start a document with that content. You'll probably have maybe five or six or seven fresh posts the first time you do this, next year, when the event comes up again, you've already got five or six posts that you can copy, maybe freshen up some dates or freshen up with uh, the first uh, sentence with something that's relevant to that event. But now you've got uh, curated content that you can start to use over and over and over again. Automation is an absolutely wonderful thing. There are five major automation uh, systems, and I'll call it system because that's what they are. There's Agora Pulse, Hootsuite, Loomly, Buffer, and HubSwat. Hootsuite is actually a Canadian out of Vancouver. Hootsuite and Buffer were two original automation programs. But as they became more, more popular, then of course there were other services that came along that offered more things. And then Hootsuite and Buffer uh, grew. So let me show you how it works. So this is my Hootsuite feed. So first of all, over on this side, we have my current tweets. That's what I've tweeted today. This is quite old. So it wasn't, uh, isn't, I didn't actually do it today, but let's just say that. I have retweets. So posts that I've made, content that people have liked, and they've retweeted. Now, why is that important to have this together in, in a column like this? Well, engagement is a key word in social media. Having conversations is a, a key part of social media. So this one, I wrote this post, serving others is the highest ideal you can aspire to. 
it was retweeted. And then I thanked them for the like or for the retweet. It was an act of service. Of course, my little bit of uh, humor referring to the, to the quote. Sometimes you will have threads of 20 or 30 posts that uh, people just engage with and make comments and it goes further and further and further. But that's a really important way to build your communities. These are scheduled posts. What do I mean by scheduled posts? Well, you post something at eight o'clock in the morning, there will be a totally different audience at eight o'clock at night. So you schedule the same post for eight o'clock at night. Now, this is totally random. And I didn't even notice this until uh, I was uh, setting up the, uh, the, the, the show for tonight. But if you notice here, this is the same quote as this is, but the pictures are different. And that's a social media secret is that changing up the pictures will change, will increase your engagement. Because if you use the same picture, someone might see it in their feed later that day and, and think, well, uh, I saw that this morning and I didn't engage with it then. I'm not going to engage with it now. But a different photo increases the engagement level. So now you're saying, are you kidding me, Robin? You said you were going to simplify things. Now I not only have to have photos, but I have to have a bunch of photos for similar topics. Let me show you something. This post uh, links to a, a blog post that I wrote. So it's about social media. So Hootsuite and most of the other services have photo banks and photo libraries, and some even have uh, video, short video libraries. They have uh, uh, GIFs that you can, you just uh, go into your library, uh, search for social media. So all of these pictures come up. Now I've got an easy source, uh, quick as one, two, three, and I've got a new post ready to go. So I can schedule it for later or post it for now. Uh, one of the things I forgot to mention that's really important, let's go back this way, is this is my Facebook feed that's over here. And some of the, well, the paid subscriptions of automation um, programs will allow you to have about 12 or 13 of your profiles there. Most people wouldn't do that. Uh, some agencies that do social media for companies, they might have a few different feeds in there. But with my feed, I have LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter, and they all come up uh, into my feed, and I can post the same message to the different uh, sites and change them slightly so that uh, the LinkedIn message is appropriate for LinkedIn. So behavior patterns, I alluded to it. So when are your people active on social media? A uh, former member of ours, Brent Baroudis, lives on the island and he speaks across Canada. I can send him an email at five o'clock in the morning and he will answer it in 15 minutes. I know he checks his uh, social media uh, around that time and then uh, checks it later on in the day. So are your people active at five o'clock, at eight o'clock in the morning, 10 o'clock in the morning, uh, two in the afternoon? Uh, I know that there are some people on this call who are on their phones on a regular basis. So uh, this tells you that you can post at different times. I'm not saying to post at each of these uh, uh, for each of these time zones, but you can post the same content at different times and reach different audiences. Time zones are also important. I am targeting a business audience with my personal uh, social media. So I will post uh, things, content at two o'clock in the morning or four o'clock in the morning because I know that people in Europe are just getting into the office when I post that at two o'clock in the morning. You have projects where uh, people obviously are in different time zones around the world. You may have partners that operate uh, 
around that project. Maybe they're local rotary clubs or their NGOs or uh, other uh, humanitarian organizations. So if you post information that is relevant to them, it will help them and they will be able to repost uh, and keep in contact within their community and letting them know that uh, your Rotary Club is involved. So online conversations put the social into social media. The broad definition of social media is any form of online communication that is two ways or more is social media. Email is social media. You email someone, they answer you back. It's a two-way conversation. And of course, we all have suffered through death by email in Rotary, where you have the message that starts out, what do you think we should do? Then somebody responds, I have no idea. And then it goes back to somebody else. Well, have you asked Bill? And then it goes back and someone else participates and says, I don't think Bill would know anything about it. I'm not even sure that we should do this. And it goes on and on and on and on and on until you have a six foot email. Raise your hands if you've had that experience in your club. So the theory of reciprocity, I help you and you help me. So how do you do that? Of course, commenting, sharing, liking, asking questions. You forward or retweet, tag others, hashtag. You engage people by commenting and interacting with their content. Check someone's feed that you would like to connect with. Find a post that you uh, feel is uh, worthwhile commenting on. Comment on it in a way that lets them know you take it seriously. They will notice. Do more than just say, nice article, Cam. That was really cool. Steve Kuyak is a member of Calgary West, and he is on Twitter as well as LinkedIn, and we interact a lot. And uh, about a year ago, we had Ali Velshi speak at our club. Uh, Ali's uncle is Sadat Kashevji. Many of you may know him. And uh, of course, he's an anchor on N N MSNBC. He's been on CNN and in Canada and, uh, with CTV and City TV going way back. So in promoting the program, I posted this mes message on LinkedIn and I tagged several other people that I know uh, understand Rotary or are Rotarians and will help by uh, reposting it in the, their feed. So that's exactly what Steve did. And if you notice, uh, he uh, we wrote a message that could easily be cut and pasted. Uh, it has the link in it. So people could uh, go to our club website and register for the meeting. And all of the information was there. So that's one way of engaging. Now, this is really cool because this just happened today. Now, those of you from Fish Creek, I want you in on a little secret. I baited Kent Fraser, and I'll show you how. So I posted this content this morning. The Shelter Box Canada Disaster Relief Organization still needs funds to provide basic necessities of life to survivors in the Pakistan floods. They are often first on the ground in times of crisis. How can you help? Now, I tagged Shelter Box Canada and I tagged Kent Fraser. Now, the next thing that happened about an hour later, Shelter Box gave me a direct message saying thank you for your continued support. Now, that's one of the reasons why I support Shelterbox on, uh, on social media. Number one, uh, they're so easy to support. But number two, they're active on social media and they engage. So then later in the day, I did not tell Kent I was going to do this. This is just what happens anytime I post Shelterbox material. Kent retweeted. Now, I can't read it because I've got something over it. Okay, here we go. So he retweeted this tweet. He liked it. And so there's value there. And then he also retweeted the shout out. So that's how social media engagement works in supporting Rotary and supporting Rotary supported organizations. Now, just a side note, Henry Matilla, uh, 
down here at the bottom, Henry Principe, lives in Peru, and he engages with my content just about every day, and he has uh, retweeted uh, Shelterbox uh, uh, content. So graphics in plain language. A graphic will profile key information, make it pop out, different text colors and fonts in the main body grabs attention, Relevant photos increase engagement and information retention by adding color and meaning. Graphic production platforms are Canva, Easel, Vista Create, or PowerPoint. Now there are others as well. Most of you will be familiar with Canva. Now what you get in a graphic design uh, platform is you get templates so you just click on a uh, you're doing a powerpoint so you click on their powerpoint templates up comes one that you want to use you cut and paste your material and you download it voila you've got a cool graphic i'm going to share a little bit about powerpoint tonight because i know all of you have it this is written for you when you get your pdf later on uh, this is, you can follow this through, create a graphic in PowerPoint, file, save as, the title of the graphic, click file, choose the file type, and just this one. Now, what does all that mean? Let me take you through it. So, I want to make a graphic of Grumpy Gus. So, it's in a total show. So, there's about 30 slides in that show. So I click Save As, I add the title, I click the down arrow, and up comes all of these options. I can do a, a PDF of the whole show or just that slide. Now, what I found is that uh, you, you uh, at least I haven't figured out how to embed a link to a JPEG, but I can embed a link to a PDF. And I just did that this morning for Rotary Remembers that uh, I'm gonna share a little bit more about. So then we come down here, this little box, so we do save, little box comes up and just this one. And of course, information about uh, where to, what file to send it to on your computer. So creating graphics in PowerPoint, that's the first part of the easy. Second part, this is, amazing. The new PowerPoint uh, uh, programs have a function called designer. So what I do is cut and paste my content and I edit it. So right now, the slide is white. I go over and I click designer and all of these options come up. And you can see by the slider here that there's a whole lot more. This just shows about half of the ones. So I click on the option, the design that I want, and I can use that for my entire show, or I can use it for separate slides. What I'm doing tonight is I'm showing you this now because as we end up the tutorial, all the slides pretty well have used designer uh, to make them. And if you see over here, you'll see uh, uh, three of the ones that are coming up. So right on in plain language, Grammarly is the wonderful tool I was talking about earlier. I use Grammarly. It is attached to my emails, to my blog posts, to my social media, anywhere that I write, I use the Grammarly function. Of course, there's spell check, but there's also grammar suggestions. When I write a post and I upload it to Grammarly, it tells me things like, this is a little bit too stuffy sounding. You need to dumb it down a little bit for your reading audience. So I do that. It gives different options as far as sentence structure is concerned. And there's a whole lot more and you can Google it and find out a little bit more. I highly recommend it. So headlines are one of the most important aspects of social media content. Strong headlines demand attention. They show up in search engines. They are easy to cut and paste into social media feeds. You can add a link to a website, blog post, or purchasing site. That makes an instant message ready to promote your post. Making it better, write and rewrite headlines until you get them right. Are there stronger? or shorter words that would be better? 
Will flipping the last part of the sentence for the first part strengthen the impact? That's what songwriters do all the time. When writing a post, read it out loud. Is it conversational? Does it sound like you're sitting at a Starbucks chatting over a latte? Resist the obvious. Never be cheesy. Be cheesy. Writing 101, sentences, sh sentences should not include more than 10 to 15 words. This slide is really important. Paragraphs should be two to four sentences as a guide. Start a new paragraph for each new idea. Start each paragraph with a strong statement about the main topic. When possible, resist starting sentences with a clause. So each sentence, you want to have a strong launch. Avoid using a $1,000 word when a $100 or even a $10 word will do. The general rule is to write at a 10th grade reading level. That doesn't mean you're dumbing down your content, not by any means. It has to do with the way people consume online content. Now, don't be a blobber. I referred to that earlier. How many have received a rotary email, let's say, where it started at the top, and 10 days later, you got to the bottom and there were no breaks, there were no paragraphs. It was all one great big blob. You don't wanna do that. Break it up, baby. Start a new section when you introduce a new idea. Create sections of two to four paragraphs. Write subheadings that will guide the eye and make it easier to absorb and remember your content. Sections divide content into consumable bites. Using, using space is paramount. Space relaxes the content and helps to focus readers on the main idea. Bullet points, arrows, or numbers break up the information. They are really important in social media. Readers respond to lists. And just a little uh, marketing tip, when you do a list, readers always read the last thing on the list. They may not read the entire list, but they do read the last thing. So it makes sense to put the most important thing last. What do I mean by this? Some people will go to a blog site, for example, and read a post, and they'll read it from beginning to end. They'll read every word, but lots of other people will go and they'll skim so that your title, your subtitles, your bullet points, all of your breakout session sections uh, count for content and helps them to understand in a quick scan what the topic is all about. A hashtag before keywords draws people to your content when they're searching for information related to that word. Use only three to five hashtags in each social media post. Now, fundraising, clarity in the path to action. That is really important. How many times have you gone on your Rotary website or another club's website and you know about an activity, an event, and you want to attend and you try to buy and it's convoluted, it's difficult, you can't quite figure out what you're supposed to do before you finally uh, find the click on button. A confused mind always says no. Have a clear call to actions. Tell visitors what to do. If you don't tell them, they won't do it. One goal, one call to action. Now that can be a problem in Rotary because we often have projects or events where there may be calls to action and they overlap, uh, which makes it difficult to communicate and can be confusing if we don't think it through. One call to action per page, two to four links on the cell page. What that means is that uh, it, there's nothing wrong with having a couple of calls to action through your presentation information. So it might be uh, RibFest and you got information about RibFest. You can have a link to buy in two or three different places because some people know right away they want to be there and they'll click after reading the first paragraph. Other people will read right to the end. So there's that's a really good strategy. Keep it positive, use a positive engaging tone, even when your content deals with serious topics like polio, eradication, clean water projects, domestic abuse, or addiction recovery. Now, what do I mean by that? You want to offer hope. You need to talk about the reality of the crisis, the reality of the need, but you want to offer hope. So your message might read something like this. 
Help us rescue people in crisis. Give it, give today. You can be the difference. And of course, the click button is right there. Offer hope. In plain language, pictures that tell stories, and we're coming to the end. So first impressions are absolutely everything. That's why you want to have great pictures that tell stories. Andrew Bitcom and Tracy Bitcom were part of a team that went to Guatemala from Calgary West to build wood stoves. Our club has been involved in projects there for probably about 15 or 16 years. And they're in a very remote area. And uh, uh, there's a whole story that's really quite fascinating that goes with it. And so here you have pictures that tell stories. You have Andrew climbing a very rustic ladder to get up onto the roof of the house, one room house, one room shack is really what it is, but it means the world to the people that live in it. You also see the kids that are helping him. Isn't that a great rotary story right there? And of course, the little guy who could resist him. This is a terrible, terrible picture. If you look at it, you can see it's overexposed. There's dust on the lens. Technically, it's not a great picture, but the story is worth millions. You couldn't stage a photo like this. This is past president Terry Felton. And he was showing those kids and their dad a phone for the very first time. So the story is these kids are seeing a phone for the first time. You can't buy that kind of experience. Bill Fitzsimmons, I believe, is on the call tonight, and he takes great photos. This is in a project, uh, a microfinance projects uh, tour in uh, uh, Honduras. And um, the people in these photos are doing things. They're not standing at their tables grinning at the camera. These pictures are much more engaging. So if you're asking people to give to this cause, do you think they're more likely to give to, uh, pro to uh, the projects that these photos show that people are actively uh, doing something and benefiting from? Uh, I have to apologize to David Impey, who is a wonderful photographer in our club. Uh, this was the only photo that, that I had of this. It's small resolution. I didn't have time to ask him for a large resolution, so please forgive me for that. But I wanted to show this picture of the food bank. Now, Garfield Ganong, past president, I believe is on the call tonight as well. Uh, Rotarians at work. Uh, filling food hampers. Over here, we've got Terry Felton. He just has a knack of getting into pictures. And um, uh, Saskia Knight uh, was there on that particular project. So that's all important. And you see Rotarians in the background at other stations. The real important part of this story is the background. People don't understand how big the food bank is. They don't understand, understand the scope. So when you're looking for volunteers at your club, uh, this helps to understand what goes on and also what the need is. I'm not going to go through this. I've got two slides of photo tips. When you get your PDF, you can go through it. All kinds of tips for taking better photos. This is a wonderful tool. Remove. Dot BG. I've never seen uh, a uh, suffix like that before, but dot BG, remove dot BG. What remove does is take the background out of photos in five seconds. How many times have you had photos that you really have uh, someone in the photo that you would like to profile? And maybe it was on a project, somebody on a project. Maybe it was just uh, photos of an event and there's clutter in the background, there's trees, there's weird stuff going on in a wall. With remove, you can take the background out and isolate that individual or thing in five seconds. Now, I got this picture this morning from District Governor Steve Levitt. Now, 
am I pandering to the district governor by including this? I, I don't know. I'll just throw that question out here. Uh, Steve is uh, taking part in Rotary Remembers, uh, which is an event that the Calgary clubs uh, do every Re Remembrance Day. And of course, anyone else that wants to attend, by all means, you're welcome. So Steve sent this picture and it's professionally taken. It looks great. It has a kind of a light gray background. For what I was doing in the Rotary Remembers slide, uh, it didn't quite match up with the rest of the slide. So I uploaded it to remove, and this is what I got. So it took the background out in total. You don't see any fuzzy parts. You don't see any uh, 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 compromise in the quality of the picture. And then I thought, just for fun, I'll just rotate it and we'll have the Steve Levitt trio. Now, to me, they look like they maybe play jazz or I don't know, maybe maybe opera. Con I don't think country, not quite dressed for country, but a remove is a wonderful tool. I did I used remove to create this slide for one of my blog posts. Uh, all of these items uh, were the background was taken out. So Facebook, what do people see the first time they see it? Bio photo, the banner, and the title, the headline content. It takes people one second for visitors to form an opinion based on what they see. Visual impressions are often made before people read the first word of your content. A headline takes about four seconds to grab their attention. After eight seconds, many will bounce if you haven't engaged them by that time. So what prompts visitors to engage quality pictures, quality content that have a story? Now, we like to say that the eyes are the window to the soul. Now, there's nothing more annoying than seeing a LinkedIn profile photo or a Facebook profile photo with the person whose profile it is standing in a group of 50 people, or maybe they're with their family, or there's a long shot of them standing on a log down by the seaside. You can't see their face. You can't see into their soul. You can't uh, get a, a feeling of what they're all about. Now, this little guy over here looking off to the side, um, I don't feel myself uh, being attracted to him. This guy here looks like he's got something to hide maybe uh, lacks confidence as this guy over here does he looks like kind of a scaredy dog this guy's scary i don't think i'd want to connect with him the one over here on the bottom left hand side it's well set up it's well framed and it's attractive it gives me insight into who that little guy is so I won't go through all of this, but this is information and tips for taking a really good profile uh, picture. So the biography, lean on your elevator speech. You have a few characters to tell your story. All of the social media sites, you have a limited number of characters that you can use on for your bios and for other parts of your introductory sections. So you want to tell your story and why visitors should follow, friend, or connect with you. Include what you post about your location and a link to your website and other social media platforms. Craft three to four short sentences, state what you do, include industry hot words, insert action words, state how you solve problems, and of course, inject energy, enthusiasm, and passion into your elevator speech. But your elevator speech will be your core that you'll use, you'll adapt it from site to site. But once you've taken time to craft that, you'll use it over and over and over again. So this is a good idea of a... Uh, uh, a good representation of, of what a good profile picture is all about. So she was standing uh, uh, inside or with a group. So uh, remove was used to take the background out. They added a more soft and subtle background and you can do that with remove and then posted it. So this uh, particular uh, 
profile page, you can tell by looking at the banner what she does. She offers social media tips, She's got an attractive profile and a very short elevator speech. Uh, she uh, is on uh, in uh, Forbes, uh, top 50 social media power influencer. So it tells you all you really need to know about that. Kim Garst is another uh, guru. You can Google her. I would highly recommend uh, getting on her email list. Has great uh, content. Again, by looking at the banners, you can tell what these people are all about. Now, when Mary Turner and I worked together, uh, I thought, well, I'll just uh, impress her by doing a screen, catch, screen cap, a screen capture of Jennifer Jones' uh, Twitter site. So this is from a couple of years ago, and so I'm sure that she has more uh, uh, followers by now. In any event, what Mary did was she looked at that picture. She says, you know, that's really familiar. As I look at it, my husband and I are standing right back there in that crowd. That was cool. So uh, there's all kinds of templates that you can use to develop your banner, your, your uh, profile. HubSpot is a go-to source for quality information that really takes you through step-by-step -step building of social media sites, and you don't have to go elsewhere to answer questions. So uh, when you get the PDF, just copy this, uh, put it in your URL, and go through this this whole uh, uh, Facebook beginner's guide. It's wonderful. There, there are also some things that you can download so that you can have it as a source that you can go to on a regular basis. This is cool. Uh, Hootsuite has uh, social media image sizes for all networks. Now that is, you don't see it as much as you used to see it, but you'd see uh, profile pictures where, well, the Rotary logo uh, with Rotary and the Rotary Club and was in the profile uh, picture and it doesn't fit. It looks terrible. Or the banner where a picture was uh, too big or too small. Uh, this template, you download these templates and it gives you the exact size that you have to uh, crop your pictures or uh, edit your pictures to be able to fit. Facebook advertising, you need to start using this, this phenomenal tool. There is expertise that is involved. I started out uh, trying to do some slides to take you through it. And then I found this and I thought, well, why not just send you to uh, the source? Uh, and this is it. Cut and paste this URL and they also have, in fact, I think this is, I downloaded this, and that's the cover of their beginner guide to Facebook and Instagram marketing. Facebook Live, you talk about aspects of content posted elsewhere. You reveal new information presently, uh, previously unshared. You set up interviews. You add a personal touch to an invitation. So what does this mean? Well, Facebook Live and also uh, LinkedIn has a live component, Twitter has a live component, and Instagram does as well. What that allows you is to broadcast live like you're on live TV, but you need to use the tool judiciously. The best way to use it is to promote other things that you're doing, whether it's a post or a, a, you're looking for um uh, funding for a project or you're trying to sell tickets. That's how you use Facebook Live or Twitter Live or, or LinkedIn Live. You always want to include instructions about how to respond. Click, buy, attend, like, share, or comment. Now, I will say that Facebook Live gets a way lot more attention than most other kinds of Facebook of, of posts and content that's uploaded to Facebook. It's it's a very useful uh, tool, but you need to, to work with it and be ready when you do go live. Instagram, I don't know a lot about Instagram. I have an account, but I don't use it that much. So I asked my daughter, Lorene, who works for a broadcasting company, a very large broadcasting company. And I thought I would get a lot of information from her. So last weekend when she was down, I said, Lorene, what's the difference between Facebook and Instagram? And this is what she said with kind of a cold voice. 
If you're over 40, you're on Facebook. If you're under 40, you're on Instagram. And that kind of sums it up. Mitch Jackson is just a fascinating guy. I don't know whether some of you know him. How I was introduced to him, I include Rotarian in my biographies on my social media feeds. Now, I do that for two years. If you go to my LinkedIn uh, profile and connect with me, by the way, uh, please do, and I'll connect with you, uh, or go to my Twitter feed. You'll see that I have Rotarian in the bio. I do that for two reasons. Number one is to help promote Rotary. But number two is for selfish reasons, people by and large, even if they don't know a lot about Rotary, they know enough to feel good about it and think that Rotary is a good thing. So telling people you're a Rotarian adds to your credibility. So I have Rotarian in my LinkedIn feed. Mitch Jackson connected with me. Who's Miss Mick? Who's Mitt? Who is Mitch Jackson? I did some research, Googled his name, all kinds of stuff came up. First of all, he's a Rotarian. Second, he's a lawyer in California, belongs to a California Rotary Club. He's a really well known speaker who speaks at big conferences, written all kinds of books, and he posts content just about every week. Uh, get onto his uh, uh, mailing list. I highly recommend it. He's got stuff all the time. It's a little more higher into uh, metadata and uh, content like that, but uh, you'll find uh, information that you can use. Now, his Instagram site, look at this, the Rotary four-way test. Just Google it and check it out for yourself. So he's got a video of the four-way test that is the compass to his business and his everyday life. Then over here on this side, uh, he, he expands on it. And those are pinned, that is pinned content that is always at the top of his Instagram feed. So check it out. It's a, he's a, a really a cool person and does a lot of really cool things. So last but not least, I'm going to share this content. HubSpot has a great explanation about uh, Instagram and how to build an account and how to market. Check this out when you get the PDF. Other resources on uh, Hootsuite, uh, they've got a lot of really great things that you can uh, check out. Uh, as was mentioned, I wrote uh, Building the Rotary Brand. I posted a blog or a, uh, I posted content about once a month and over four years. So there's about 53 posts there. Uh, the most popular posts are on the right-hand side of the blog site. And I wrote a number of posts about social media, building sustainable meetings, uh, media, branding, sponsorship, a number of topics. Uh, so you can check that out. And of course, on my uh, blog site, which is branded with Robin, uh, the free stuff that I referred to earlier, uh, that was a post that I uh, uploaded in late August. So you can check that out and there's a lot of really good free stuff that's in there. So this is how you can contact me. This is how you can connect with me. And uh, by all means, it, it'd be great to, uh, to connect with you, to friend you, to uh, uh, follow you and you follow me back. So finally, John, we're at the questions part. And I'm going to turn it over to you. Love it. Thank you. It's great presentation. There's tons of stuff there. Wow. I, uh, I'm busy taking notes here and I uh, needed another page. So lots of stuff. So great. Great. Thank you. Um, uh, not, not many questions yet. I, I mean, I do have, uh, there is one person that's posted uh, uh, and, and their question was, uh, our club is really active in Facebook. Is it worth our time to activate our Twitter account as well as Instagram? Yeah, absolutely. Because each uh, platform will open you up to different audiences. Mm -hmm. Now, media, for example, they really follow uh, Twitter. They're engaged with Twitter all the time. So depending on where you, you're at, like if you're in Edmonton or you're in Calgary or Lethbridge and Red Deer, there's a lot of media there. So they will they will uh, track what you do and what you post on your uh, Twitter account. So by all means, it just uh, adds to the synergy of your online presence. Good. 
Um, another question uh, says, uh, do you have uh, any specific suggestions for a club uh, Facebook page? Well, I, if, if when you get the PDF, if you go to the HubSpot uh, download, that takes you through it step by step by step. And it, you'll, uh, by following that, you'll do it right the first time. Mm -hmm. Good. Here's, uh, here's a question. Um, question being, should, should every club have their own social media person or somebody who is the guru of social media? Well, that's a great question. I know that Calgary West has gone through a lot of agony uh, with different ones uh, of our membership, including me, who have uh, done social media. And, uh, uh, you know, it, it can be really overwhelming. Here's what I recommend. I think you should have a team. You should have three to four people who do different functions. Now, we've talked about content, social media feeds on quality content. Well, if you've got two or three people that are actively looking for keeping an eye out for quality content, that is great. If you have one person that maybe does all the posts, that uh, that really cuts down on the job. Uh, and then if you have other people that share the load, um, someone that uh, it's their job to go online every once a week and uh, engage with uh, other people's posts, uh, that really helps. So I recommend that there be a team, that there be two to three people that are involved. Love it. Thank you. Um, what are your thoughts about the challenges that uh, we as Rotary Clubs don't always have the people with the interest, skills, and willingness to take on social media? How, I mean, how, do you have a solution for that? I think it's important enough that you be there. Now, let me back up a little bit. For people searching for your Rotary Club. It makes a statement if you have a really bad website. It makes a statement to anyone that's, let's say, 40 or 50 when you don't have any social media profile. Because remember the Mary Turner search, uh, the whole first page and the second page were filled with Mary Turner stuff. So it makes a statement. So what I how I would respond to that, I would... Uh, entertain uh, paying a consultant uh, a little bit a week to get your social media function going. What I expect would happen is people in the club would then take an interest because they don't have to start it and they can just come alongside. But uh, I, would, uh, I would entertain that and it's worth the investment. It's also worth, worth the investment of paying for Facebook uh, and uh, Instagram advertising as well. Oh, thank you. Great, uh, great uh, response there. Is there an effective way to use uh, QR codes in social media? Uh, and then is there a site that we uh, that can help you uh, make that CRO or QR code? Um, I'm just trying to call up. I just saw something the other day uh, with a, a, a social media um, content creation platform where there was a there was a QR code uh, function. So the short answer is yes. Include uh, QR codes if you've got them. Um, and the only thing I would say is so supposedly you're using a QR code to uh, so people can scan on their phones yeah. and take them directly to a website or uh, tick selling tickets or uh, donations, that kind of thing. The only thing I would say about that, don't stay away from it, but just be careful that you also include links because not all people are into uh, QR codes. Uh, I was in a bank lineup at uh, during COVID and uh, the way that you like to go in and, and make a deposit, you had to, to register, right? And you did that through a QR code that was on a sign outside the bank and everybody lined up or stayed in their cars until it was their turn. Well, there was this one elderly elderly gentle gentleman that this was just on Mars as far as he was concerned. He was so frustrated. So not everyone uh, uh, is comfortable with QR codes, but by all means, don't stay away from it. It's a way of the future. Mm -hmm. uh, here's a question. It says, when, when, when you're looking for to hire somebody uh, to help them with their social media, uh, it, you know, as, as you said it, uh, you know, there, it, there's a, there's a bit of a cost to it. Um, but at the end of the day is, is it what makes it worth it? Well, your social media presence, 
uh, you're accessing uh, whole new communities of, uh, uh, of an audience and uh, it increases the profile of your club. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is, it, can, can you quantify that? So I, I, again, at the end of the day, everybody's looking at uh, dollars and cents to make sure that it, that it actually mm -hmm. does matter. So if you spend, uh, you know, a hundred dollars on, uh, on a social media, you know, expert or somebody that, that guides, are you going to get a hundred dollars of investment back on that? The caveat is that you need to do some research and find someone that knows what they're doing. That would be obvious. Mm -hmm. Probably there are people in your club that own businesses that maybe work with a uh, social media consultant or someone else in your town or community that uh, uh, has had success. Uh, so the answer is yes, you will definitely get a return, but it takes time and yeah. you have to be there and you have to be consistent. Yeah. And probably the other caveat to that is that you actually have to know what you want. I mean, if you, you have to know that you're trying to promote fundraising for polio eradication, or you, I mean, you have to, there's got to be a purpose to it, right? And so you can really easy track those things by, you know, at the end of the day of, of understanding what it is that you want. Well, I forgot to say this, so I'm glad you mentioned this. The worst thing that Rotary Clubs do is sell, 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 sell. So there comes a point when people that maybe uh, are in your community, they no longer pay attention to your posts because you're always asking them for something. Mm -hmm. So that's why you go through the process that I outlined tonight in developing content and developing uh, the content that takes people through the funnel till you get to the engagement point. So you can't just be selling. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, here's a, another, uh, another question that says, uh, uh, this person is a um, member of an interact club at his high school, and cool. we're having trouble getting a, a approval for a public social media account that's affiliated with our school. And again, liability and also safety issues. Do you have any advice for pursuing uh, our administration, probably the school, to be in favor of this idea? I'd have to know more about the specific situation, mm -hmm. but uh, I think the proof is in the pudding. And as a club, you're obviously making an impact in the school, in the way you comport yourself, the way you act, the things that you do, and uh, keep working on the relationship with the school. Now, it would be easy for me to say, well, just go out and, uh, uh, and start a, uh, your own site, do it uh, as, as a private organization. And that may be the way that you'll need to go, but you also want to respect the legalities, the insurance risks, all of those kinds of things that the school is concerned about. Like ask them, say, look, it, um, we need to have, uh, we need to be on social media. So we need you to help us make this happen. Love it. Great. Thank Though, you. The other thing that you could possibly do is partner with a club. And I didn't get into it tonight, but uh, you can set up, of course, different Facebook accounts out of one main one. And that's how businesses are often set up, business Facebook. So there's there's the main business or an agency that has a Facebook account, has a private account. I don't know why Facebook still does this, has a private account that then you can uh, create a business account. So that would be another way that uh, that you could go. Okay. Uh, here's another question that says, uh, now everybody's on Club Runner. So mm -hmm. how do we how do we engage and how do we use Club Runner uh, and interact or engage the uh, social media platform? I have to admit that I don't know the answer to that question, and I should, to my shame. Um, Christine Bearden is the guru of uh, Club Runner, and uh, uh, I know it ha has phenomenal resources, but I can't answer that question. I'm not really sure. But contact Charlene. Mm, great. Absolutely. Uh, another question. Uh, I'm a teacher and an Interact Club advisor. The social media doesn't have to, oh, this was a response to one of the questions. Uh, she's a teacher and an Interact advisor. The social media doesn't have uh, to even mention the school. So there, that might be a, another caveat to the question that was, that was asked. Thank you, Alana, for sharing. Um, 
And then also have the interact clubs uh, connect with the school Facebook would be another option. Mm -hmm. If you have a cool uh, school's Facebook club, they can always engage with the, um, with the um, uh, interact club there as well. A great solution. Uh, um, that the, Atlanta also responded by saying students will have to share it. Um, they use Snapchat for, Snapchat for communication and uh, in, interact, uh, but you don't have to. Um, and uh, then what I found is that they wanted to, yeah, they wanted immediate information to share communications. Okay, good. Thank you, Alana, for that. Perfect. Um, how about hashtags? You talked about, you, you spent some time talking about hashtags. Is um, I've actually never done a search. Uh, so if I want to find uh, branding experts, all I have to do is, is in my... Uh, um, search card my url i can just put in a uh, hashtag uh, brand advisors and and all or, brand advisors would pop up or even just uh, uh do a search for uh, brand specialist brand advisors okay. and uh different information different sites that have that in their uh, search engine optimization or they uh, they've used hashtags um, on, on their social media, which you always want to do. Don't post anything without a hashtag. Uh, it's a hashtag gives it energy and life, but uh, that's how it, it will come up. Mm -hmm. uh, another question uh, that came up, it says, uh, do you have a, a secret to get club members to share or even like Facebook posts? That takes uh, patience. And uh, uh, I remember one time a couple of years ago, uh, the person that was doing social media uh, just did a survey, how many people are on a certain kind of uh, uh, social media pr uh, uh, platform. And uh, okay, well, that's what we're going to do. And uh, uh, now we'd like you all to, uh, to connect with us. Well, that didn't happen. It, it one of the things that you can do is you can mention people. You post something and then you mention people. Now, there's another Rotarian that I'm engaged with a lot, and that is Tammy Truman of Tammy Truman Insurance. Now, everything she posts is positive. It's about uh, like she does a lot of sponsorship of uh, the, the Calgary Stampeders. Yeah, sorry, Edmonton, but she does. And uh, uh, I know she's a Rotarian. I know I can always trust her content. So periodically, she will mention my name in a LinkedIn post, and I will mention her name. And she always uh, reposts or forwards and always engages with it. So as far as your club is concerned, that might be uh, an easy way, but it'll take a while to uh, get the club mobilized to uh, be active in, in uh, your social media program. Good, thank you. Super. Any more? Uh, any more questions? This has been great. That. No, it's good. There, uh, you know. It's uh, you know. You, I think you've been doing this for a while, so it's that wisdom that you're, you know, that you're sharing with us. Is these best practices that. Uh, Will certainly help us uh, in whether we're, we're business owners or whether we're just running or whether we're running our clubs and we're trying to grow rotary to wherever it needs to be. Uh, that, I mean, those are all important things and and we can't do it enough. And, and there, there should be a rotary club in every neighborhood, not every not in every one in every city, but every neighborhood. I mean, the things that we do and together we're a lot better than just one off. So super, super stuff. Appreciate it, Robin. Thank you so much. I would have mentioned this earlier, but uh, Jody Swanson, uh, it would be great to introduce you to uh, Rick Eisted, who uh, is uh, uh, looks after all the webinar stuff in uh, uh, District 5360, but he is in UK tonight. So uh, the last email I got from him this afternoon, John, I think you got it too, was about uh, five o'clock. Mm -hmm. And of course, we started at seven, which would be what three o'clock in the morning uh, yeah. in UK. Yeah. So I don't know why he wasn't on the call, like where's his dedication and his focus. Yeah. <laughs> but both of you would really enjoy getting to know each other. Uh, Rick is a past district governor as well. Love it. Yep. Yep. Rick's a good friend of mine.
great guy. Love it. Well, if there aren't any other questions, uh, again, I'll stop the recording and uh, and then move us on. You'll be looking for a couple things. There is a PDF that's going to be coming out. Uh, you'll find that in your uh, in your email mailbox here shortly. And uh, also, um, our next scheduled we uh, uh, webinar is going to be on Tuesday, November fifteenth. I should have said all this stuff earlier, but uh, and I, I just want you to know that uh, again, content is really important, and we're trying to provide just like Robin's done here to to provide great content. So. Appreciate it. Hopefully uh, everybody got something out of this, which I know I did. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, well done. Good night, everyone. A lot of thanks in the chat. Pardon me? I said there's a lot of thanks in the chats. Oh, cool. Yep. Cool. Yeah. A lot of chat, a lot of thanks. Questions were cool too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, I love the way that you uh, you handle them. That uh, uh, worked really well. Well, there was, yeah. You don't do positive stuff. You don't do uh, videos. You don't narrate videos by any chance, do you? Like you sound <laughs> like you do. <laughs> I, okay. Uh, yeah, I just did a video today that um, I noticed my voice was a bit raspy. Yeah, I, I got to go back and redo it again. You know, anyway, a bit of a perfectionist. Well, uh, my daughter Lorene works with uh, Chorus Entertainment. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, and uh, so she, uh, they, what they've done is they've organized themselves into creative centers, mm -hmm. and Calgary is a creative center, so they do commercials for. Uh, radio and television all across Canada for global and, and uh, you know, chorus radio stations. And uh, so she uh, 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 voices stuff that shows up in Halifax and Edmonton, oh, a lot of stuff on Kiss and stuff. Country. And yeah, so, uh, but anyway, she was in Nashville uh, a week ago and uh, came back.